Hey y'all, this is Brian and today we're gonna to take a look at the array.map method in just vanilla JavaScript. We're gonna take a look at it from multiple levels of complexity. But don't worry, we're not gonna to get too complex. We are gonna start with a very, very simple set of use cases that a junior would be very comfortable learning if they've written maybe a couple lines of JavaScript. And we're only gonna ramp up to about where like maybe a mid-level engineer will be maybe writing their first few lines of React. Sound good? All right, let's dive in and take a look at some of these use cases. All right, I said we we're gonna do uh, pretty simple stuff. So we are in CodePen. That is going to be how simple we're talking about. And in fact, I'm gonna get rid of this little display area. And I'm just gonna bring up our console. We're just gonna be doing console work here today. And let's get rid of everything except for JavaScript. So you can see it's compiling through Babel, but that's just my default setting. We don't need to, to worry too much about that. But the first thing we need to talk about when we talk about the array.map function is what the heck even are we talking about? As it turns out in vanilla JavaScript in the browser nowadays, we have multiple methods for dealing with arrays. Map being one of the simplest, but also being one of the ones that is used in literally like every single JavaScript application of all time. It is that useful, it is that important, and that's why we're talking about it today. So the reason we have this is that when you have an array, you don't necessarily want to mutate that array. You don't want to change that array. So we have an array here that is the my food array. We have soup, we have tacos, we have pizza. Obviously this could be more complex or have more items, but we don't need to worry about that. We're just gonna console log this for the moment and let's get the my food array. And while we're at it, I'm gonna to add to the top here just so we've got it, the ability to clear our console every time it loads. So we're not just building up like that over there. There we go. So we're just, we're console logging it back out. We're getting, you can see the square brackets there, three items inside of the array. If I wanted to change this, back in the old days, we would have had the var keyword, var my variable name equals something. And then I could mutate that, I could change it. But what if I wanted it to like be a spoken line? Like I like food, whatever that food item is, I would actually mutate the array and then it would be useless for me. Right? I could never go back and use it again. I'd have to have made a new, a new array. And we could, we could do that in, uh, in JavaScript today. We could say, let my new array equal a blank array. And then I could come in and I could actually for each through this and push each one into this new array, right? That is fine, uh, but there's a lot that goes into that that we don't need to worry about because we have the map function. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a new variable. We'll call it uh, my new food array. And we're gonna set that equal to the original array, my food array dot map. And the map method takes with it a function, a callback function that's actually going to happen for every single item in the array. And inside of that callback function, has an argument. The first argument is going to be the item. And we could call this whatever we want to be. In this case, I'm calling it item. It could be food, it could be name, it could be whatever you need it to be here. So it's just basically the string that we're looping through or the, uh, the item in that array. So if we want to return a new item for each of these items in the array, we're gonna actually have this be a string. So we're gonna say const return string, the string that we're gonna return. In this case, we'll use a template literal and we will say that we want the item to then say is my favorite. And that's going to then return back out of this. We have to return the item back to the new array that we're creating of return string. And so just to prove that we haven't mutated anything, we will console log my food array and my new food array. Saved it, it opened in a new window like this. Great, thanks CodePen. And you can see our two arrays, right? So first we console log the original, then we're console logging both. And so we get the original, not mutated, not changed at all. And then the new one where we have written all of that. So that's kind of our first level. You can take a simple set of strings, you can mutate them and return into a new one. But we can simplify this a little bit. This is still a lot more lines of code than maybe we need. What we can do is in, in uh, the newest versions of JavaScript, we can talk about what we call implicit returns. So since we're not really doing a whole lot with this uh, new variable, and we're not doing a whole lot by returning it, what we can do instead is get rid of all of this syntax. So we're just inside the parentheses now for our map function. And instead of returning return string, we'll actually just jump in here with that uh, template literal and we'll say item is my favorite, which is that string that we were creating. We save that in. 
and you can see that it just works. So we get this as kind of a one-liner. And while it's not always as easy to read as the explicit return is, once you get used to this sort of functionality, it keeps your code a little bit cleaner. Few, uh, few less lines of code in this way might be a good thing. All right, so let's take this one step further. Let's maybe assume that we want this to be maybe some sort of like ordered list where we're not gonna actually put this in list items. We want to actually use a number to associate with each of these, right? As it turns out, this map function, as it passes in the item, also passes in the index of the where the item is in the array. An array is always gonna have as its keys for each item, the numeric placement of where it is in that array. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera. So in this case, we want to use that to put a, a a number in front of each of these. So we'll use again, uh, the template literal functionality here, put a period there, and we will say the index, in this case, we'll say index plus one. So we don't start at zero. We want the, uh, the non-zero start there. And you can see our console is now logging one, two, three. So we could build that in in some way into our front end if we wanted to. All right, and that's, that's great, but that's like really the simplest that we could kind of get to. Oftentimes when we're talking about arrays and a lot of data work that we're doing or a lot of our new front end world that we work within, uh, we're actually using arrays of objects. So I have an array of objects. I'm gonna copy and paste in from the side here. Uh, and this is gonna be called the my food object array. And you can see it is an array. We've got the square brackets and then we move into braces because we're gonna have multiple uh, objects inside of our data. So each object now has a name property, which is soup, tacos, pizza, just like it was kind of before, but now it actually has a key on there. And then the date that was the last time I've eaten this. So we actually are going to need to do some work on that as well. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use that map functionality. We'll make a new, uh, a new array that's going to be our food string. So the same thing, we're going to take this object, we're going to convert it into an array of strings. And that array of strings will have all this data used inside of it. So my food strings is equal to my food object array. It's nice when you have autocomplete, CodePen doesn't have autocomplete, but uh, it is nice when you have it. We're gonna map through that as well. This time we're going to take the item and then we're gonna do some work inside of it. So we're gonna get rid of that implicit return now and we're gonna do some work and then return out what we have. So the work that we need to do, let's just get us to feature parity here. So we'll say I last ate item oops item dot name because now we're actually taking that item there's data on it with those properties we're going to use the key name to get soup tacos pizza so i ate last ate item name on and then we'll just take the last eaten off of it as well we need item dot and then we end our template literal which there we go and then we have to console log it that would make sense. Console log food strings. We need that to be capital S. Uh oh, doesn't like something. Where did we go wrong? Let's see what CodePen says. Unexpected token return IA last. Aha, we ended our template literal too early. There we go. All right. So now we are echoing back out, console logging. I last ate soup on Thursday, February 22nd, 2024, 1, uh, 15, 53, 44, GMT, zero. That's a lot, right? We don't want to actually display that. We want to convert that date into a nicer date string. So we're going to do that. We're going to take a const, which is going to be our date string. And we're going to set a new date that is going to be equal to the item dot last eaten which is the date that we're getting from our item uh, data. And then from there, we can use the to locale date string method, all within the date objects in JavaScript. We're gonna set this to be in uh, English US. And then in that, we can actually pass in uh, options. You don't need to worry about this for the, the map functionality here, but we're gonna say that the date style we'll start with long. And that's just gonna give us a nice return on our um, string here. And then I'm missing, I believe, a parentheses here. Let's see, nope. We'll bring this from off screen just so that we know that we've got it right. There we go. Uh, it needed to be a capital D for the new date. So that didn't change anything in our output because we need to, instead of using item.lasteaten, we will use date string. 
So you can see here, December 17th, 1995, February 22nd, 2024. And all this could be changed just by changing this one thing. We can go all the way to short, which is going to be numeric. Or we could go to full, which is exactly what we had at the beginning. So we can now manipulate all of this in a meaningful way and have it run on each of these. So again, another level of complexity. We're now manipulating the data as opposed to just redoing little bits and pieces there. And then finally, instead of just having this date, you know, this, this new array be the string, we can instead manipulate and create a new object instead and have all of the data available so that we never have to use two sets of data, two variables to access all of this data. So instead of just returning a string, let's go ahead and bring that in to a new object style. So let's set a date, uh, a string here, const, uh, we'll call it uh, food string. No, that's a bad name. We will call this the full string, and that's going to be equal to what we're currently returning down here. Oops. And then what we want to return instead is a new object for each of these. And you might think that what, what we want is to bring in the item and then also add this new full string. But as you can see over in the console, this is actually ending up nesting things for us. It adds a little bit of this kind of, we've got item with a key now inside of our, uh, inside of our return and full string as siblings, as opposed to having name, last eaten, and full string as siblings. And the fix for this is actually what we call destructuring. We're gonna destructure the item object and this is actually going to pull the two pieces of data off of that object and insert them as siblings of our new one. So now we're spreading the item, putting it next to full string. And you can see here, our new array is full of objects and those objects are full of data. So now we could use this in whatever way we need it to. This would be good for structuring, you know, markdown into HTML or various big manipulations that you want to have live side by side after you've requested some data. So to take this one step further, instead of just using this in the console, let's talk about using this in React. So we'll go one step further in our complexity here. So we will make a new pen. We're going to include React and React DOM in our JavaScript. We need a little bit of stuff for React to work. We need a root in our HTML. That's all we're going to need there. This is going to be a very, very simple React project, not how I would do React nowadays. And then from there, we actually need to create our app. So const app, this is all boilerplate. And then at the very end, we are going to render this app to the root element. And let's just put a simple uh, bit of HTML in our return for our app. We're going to return some JSX. It's going to have a div, and then we will close the div at the end and put an h1 in here. h1, uh, which will say just a list of foods, and close the h1. Save that in, and here we have just a list of foods. Now we need to populate those foods. So just like before, we can come in and we can have an array of objects. I'm just going to copy the array of objects from our old, old one. Here's our food object array. And now, instead of going all the way in and doing all the work that we had, we're going to actually create uh, all of this in our JSX, right? So now what we can do is we can loop through our array directly in the JSX. And you'll see this oftentimes in your React or your next work or however you're using React nowadays. So we're going to do curly braces here, and then we're going to say my, what do we call it? food object array, naming is hard kids, dot map. And then the map for this is going to, again, take the item. And this time we're going to return some form of HTML. In this case, we're just going to return some, um, some JSX. Uh, and we will take the item and we'll just maybe make it a list item here, just to make it a little clear. List item. In this case, we will have the um, item dot name again and close our list item. 
Save that in. And you can see we have a list of foods. I bet we'll have a warning in console. Uh, we've got lots of things going on in the console, but the main thing also is that uh, we wanna have a key for lists inside of React. So when you have multiple things and you loop through and we need to have a key on each of those items. So in this case, we don't have a data key that we could use in our data, like an ID on our data. So like we did before, let's add in the index to our map function and we can add that as the key inside of React. Key is going to be equal to the index of the array. There are better ways of doing this. Again, that's dependent on your data though. All right, and we still have the last Eden, so we'll want to use that somehow, but let's take this one step further and instead of putting all this directly in the array, let's create a new functional component in React. We will create a const food item. It's going to be a function. It's going to take in some props. It's going to have the name and the last eaten date. And then from there, it can return out to start with what we were returning out down here. We can take these parentheses, copy it, and let's have it return from there. That's really ugly, but we'll go with it for the moment. All right, now that we have that list item, what we want to do is remove the key. We don't need the key anymore. And let's work on getting our date formatted again. Again, we need to worry about the date string and all of that stuff that we did in our previous example. So let's bring that into this component, const date string, instead of this time being, uh, oh, no, it's right there, last eaten. So we're gonna take the last eaten date, make a new one and reformat all of that. And we will say item name hyphen eaten on, and let's grab the date string now. So that will go here. And then we should, be able to take this functional component, which we're returning JSX for, and put that into this array here. And that's just gonna loop through and make a new piece for each of them. So we will use our food item, which will take a name, which is item.name, and it will take a uh, eaten on, right? Or last eaten, last eaten. Um, equals item dot last eaten. And then we need to self close the tag, save it. Oop. Item is not found because it's not item dot name because we're getting that from the props. It is just name. There we go. So soup eaten on tacos eaten on, etc, etc, etc. So kind of where we've gone, right? We've gone from just looking at this in the console and doing some very simple uh, array manipulation, right? We took an array, we manipulated it, sorted it in a new variable. Uh, we just took, took a string and added it to another string and returned all of that. And then we started expanding that, right? We expanded it into looking at various uh, complexities of, of data. You've got uh, objects in there. You've got the ability to then manipulate the data inside of the object and create uh, a string from multiple pieces inside the object, the name and the, the eaten on date. And then we took that a little bit further, right? And we allowed for that to be added into the object syntax as opposed to having just had those pieces in the array. That's much more of a real world use case. And then we took that same array and that same idea and put it into what is admittedly an ugly looking component right now, um, but a component that can be used in React, right? We took the my food object array, we mapped over it, we didn't we put the index as the key, which we actually need to go back and do. And we made a React component. So this is the very basics. Uh, the idea of the array.map functionality is ubiquitous across JavaScript now. Like I said at the very beginning of this video, literally probably every bit of JavaScript that you're gonna see on the web nowadays is using the dot map functionality, array dot map. Any array has it, you're welcome to use it whenever, and you can build on it, you can grow with it. And there's a lot of other really nice functionality around it that you should give a try very soon. So until next time, I hope you keep doing amazing things on the web and we'll see you around.